Hello and welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. Absolutely thrilled to have you join me. This is a, a topic that I wasn't really planning on covering today. However, I had lunch yesterday with a very good friend of mine from New York and the conversation came up around resolutions. Actually, the question came up, do you have your resolutions clear for 2020? If you've been watching my videos, you know <laughs> I'm not a fan of resolutions. In fact, it is so last century that it's so based in Newtonian physics that I can't even, that's a whole other conversation. The reason I say that with such conviction is because resolutions don't work. And so this video is the six easy steps to hit your numbers in 2020. And I'm unpacking this process for you. And then I'm gonna do a little reveal at the end of the video. So hang in there with me. All right, so first of all, the reason why resolutions don't work is because there's never really, well, there could be, so, you know, that old saying, never say never. So there rarely <laughs> is a shift in who you're being. And that's the key to everything. You see, here's the deal. Most people don't want to change, you know? That's where, that's where this idea that change is hard comes from. And I did a video on that. So you can skip on over into my channel and you can find that video and have a watch. It's not that change is hard. There's obviously some neuroscience aspects of that. But most importantly, most people don't want to change. They want to keep doing what they're doing and then they want different results. They want to keep thinking what they're thinking and they want a new life. They want to keep allowing themselves to feel negative emotions and ponder limiting beliefs, talk about limiting beliefs, but they want to have more money, more happiness, more health, more freedom, whatever's on the laundry list, okay? So that's the first step, you guys. You have to be willing. You have to desire change. You have to ask for it. I can tell you from personal experience that when you ask, it is given. And I'll give you a, a, just a simple example. So yesterday I was, after that lunch and during that lunch, I said, you know, one of the things that I've identified that keeps me from going to the next level is self-discipline. And for those of you that follow me, you're probably rolling your eyes going, she's probably the, I think, you know, the most self-disciplined person I know, because I'm always talking about structure, right? And I do have my life really well organized, yet I can still improve. I can still get better. I can still expand my capacity for dialing in my mind, because that's what I'm talking about in terms of self-discipline, and really paying attention to the triggers when I am willing to distract myself, when I'm willing to allow myself to be distracted, and we all do it. So with that said, as I was kind of winding down last night, one of the things I was thinking to myself, one of the thoughts I was, and one of the questions I was posing to my higher self, because I talk to myself all the time, we all do, and if you think you don't, then I would like, I would beg to differ, because everyone talks to themselves all the time. You just may not be aware that you're doing it. So that would be your first step, is to get into this place of self-awareness where you're actually aware that you talk to yourself. Then 
become aware of how much what you're saying to yourself is actually negative. So you've got some work to do if you're starting at that point. And that is not what this video is about. So let me get back to the six easy steps to hit your numbers this year. It's always good just to give a little back and process on it so you've got a foundation, right? The point I'd like to make is that when I asked myself this question, first of all, I acknowledged that I can discipline my mind more effectively. And then I said to myself, well, I would really like to be more effective at that. And as soon as I started talking that way to myself, my mind started to show me or I, my higher being, spirit, God, whatever your belief system is, okay, started to show me how I can do that. So the how started to present itself. And see, this is the key. Because if you think you need to know how to do something before you can do it, you're, you're holding yourself back. What you, what you can do is you can ask yourself, okay, show me how to make this transition. And then the inspiration starts coming, the ideas start coming, the epiphanies start coming, the thought processes might come from within, might come from without. You might go to the store to buy something and you see something on a billboard, a message of some sort, on a bumper sticker. You know what I'm saying to you? Like it just comes to you. So with that all said, in order for this exercise to actually have any value to you, you have to want to be different. You have to be willing to become a better version of you. You have to be curious enough to ask yourself to expand. You have to be curious enough to say, hey, what else am I capable of? that I haven't even thought of yet? Or what else is possible that I haven't given myself permission to explore? Okay, so that's your first step. And this is the key to getting anything, anything you want in your life that's bigger than what you've currently got. You have to start with the willingness and the curiosity to be a different version of you. I used to say this question at the beginning of the NLP trainings that and the certifications that I used to facilitate. So I, I, I offer it to you here today. Are you willing to trade your life for your goals? And you know what was interesting is some people in the room would become angry at me. I remember one time saying, I want, I'm losing my mind. And then I made a joke and I went, I'd be happy to lose my mind because the way my mind has been firing is producing limiting outcomes. And I would love to have greater outcomes. And this lady in the class said, I, what are you talking about? I want to lose my mind. Like, and I was like, wow, okay. So that's where we want to start. You have to be willing and desirous. You have to desire to become a different version of you. You know, for those of you that are tuning in and watching, I want to share this with you. I'm going to do a whole video actually on eye patterns because eye patterns are key. So if you see me roaming around, it's because the way my um, computer is set up in front of me, I have these gigantic windows and I stare up at the sky a lot because the information just flows. As soon as I pop my eyes up, I'm a very visual person. And that's another key for another time is to learn, like, what is your modality? Are you visual? Do you get things visually? Are you auditory? Do you, are you kinesthetic? I promise you it's in the playlist. Okay. It's coming. It's coming. So, all right. I have a tendency to look up and then boom, the thought rolls in because I have a lot going on when I'm recording these videos. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about 
the end I'm delivering to you? Like, what do I want you to take away from this? I'm thinking about how to frame it. I'm, I'm thinking about the journey I'm taking you on mentally, emotionally. I'm thinking about the physical shifts that are taking place within your neurology because we're literally doing a repatterning right here, right now. And then I'm thinking about the next topics down the road. Like there's a lot going on in my mind. So, and I'm picking up on your energy too and the response mechanism that I'm getting back even though I'm recording this and then you're going to watch it. Energy's everywhere. I don't have to have you sitting in front of me to understand and feel the experiences that you're getting from, from these topics and these tools. All right, so here's the deal. Let's assume you want to be a greater you. Let's assume, because you're still watching, that that is a desire that you have, that you have this budding or building or insatiable curiosity about how amazing you are and what you haven't yet allowed yourself to be. And so you've made a decision that you're going to explore that. Let's just assume it's our baseline. That's where we're starting from. All right. So here's the deal. In order to hit your numbers this year, and I would like to believe that you've set some pretty significant goals for yourself, your team, your company, and this applies to your team members too. So if you're leading a team, if you're managing a company, if you're a leader in some way responsible for not just your own performance, but the performance of other people, ask them if they are willing to become bigger, better, more expansive, more evolved, more conscious versions of themselves. You have to get that level of commitment before you're going to get the numbers. I can tell you that right now. So that's the baseline. But let's go ahead. Let's move ahead and let's really unpack this. All right. So first of all, you've got the end goal. All right. Now we're going to start backing this thing out because end goals, end of 2020, for example, require a bigger end goal for your business requires people. Unless you're a solopreneur and you do not desire to have more any people working for you, which is fine, it still requires people as clients or people to buy your your widget, you know, maybe you're not offering a service, maybe you're offering an a physical product, there's still people involved. <laughs> okay, so we're backing it out. So the people, then what we want to look at is the processes. So what are the processes within your organization within your business that are required for people to step through or utilize? All right. Then from there, we've got your systems. So what are the systems? So we're backing this out again. We're reverse engineering it. And I've done a whole video on reverse engineering. I'll continue to unpack this as this quarter, this Q1 of 2020 unfolds. So with that said, now Within the systems, you know, we're really looking at your business model at this place, your systems and your structures. What, what is your business model? Do you have that mapped out? Can you identify your customer segments, your key partners, your key resources and your KPIs, <laughs> identifying the execution point, identifying and being aware of what your key performance indicators are so you can actually track this thing. It's so important to, to have this set up with a meeting rhythm that really holds all of it and you and your people accountable. So 
as you back this out, it, it takes the guesswork out of the execution, you know, who's doing what, with what resources, when are they doing it, and eventually it produces the how. I'm all about the smallest change for the biggest result, and then looking at what the key performance indicators are so you can actually track what worked, do more of that, and then turn your focus away from what didn't work and put it on what did work. Instead of trying to fix the problem, you just get more of the problem. Instead, putting the focus on what works and advancing that and building on that and growing that. And then having the dialogue with yourself and with your team around all of this that is focused on moving forward. Stop looking at the past. Stop looking back and trying to figure it out, you know? It's why the rear view mirror in your car is like this big and the windshield is like massive, right? It's about looking forward. It's, it's about moving forward. It's about creating your future. Take your, your focus off of the problem and build and build and build and move toward the future and keep doing those energy pulls and bring the future toward you and it creates this this perfect moment of synchronicity when you move toward the future and the future moves toward you and then poof there you've got your results in front of you and you're like wow that was actually easier than anything I've ever done in the past. And this is my point to creating this for you. You see, the biggest challenge you're gonna run into when it comes to raising the bar on more money, more love, and by the way, money and love are the same vibration. So when you start loving on your business, when you start loving on your team, when you start loving on yourself, then suddenly the money starts to flow. I did a video on this at one point too about a top executive that I coached at Merrill Lynch. And I said to him, you know, you can't browbeat yourself into success. He had come from a pretty abusive childhood and his dad just constantly, you know, beat on him verbally, mentally, emotionally. And it's created this young lad that then became this high-performing man that nothing was ever enough. Nothing was ever good enough. He was never good enough. And so if you're coming from this place of not enoughness, yeah, you can bring in the beans. You can definitely generate the success, but you're going to hit a wall. And when you hit that wall, you have to flip and go from having these intense, negative, away from drivers, which are always negative emotion and limiting beliefs. And you have to flip it. You have to flip it on its head and you have to start moving toward what you want and what you want and what you would like to create and what you'd like to experience absolutely has to be based in positivity and it needs to be measurable and it needs to be something that you connect to visually kinesthetically where you have a relationship with that desired outcome because you see here's the problem human beings just aren't very good at future pacing and learning to future pace is what takes you out of the past it's what takes you out of now, because now is already the past. What you're experiencing right here and now is a product of what you did in the past in terms of behavior. It's a product of what you planned in the past, in your mindset, in your self-talk. It's what you pondered in your thought process and what you ran as an emotional program or a series of emotions. Stop it, you see, stop it, because that's what created this now. If your now is wonderful, then start future pacing 
and use this exercise and move more toward what you're creating. And I'll do a future pace video at another time. So that's what I have for you today. And it was completely inspired by the lunch I had with my friend from New York that came into town. And, you know, we met up when I was in Manhattan in October. I organize these amazing receptions wherever I go on the planet. So I had this fantastic um, reception in Manhattan at the Mondrian. And we had over 100 people RSVP and I think about 80 showed up, which was remarkable. And they were all people that I've never met before. So I just expanded my friendship list and my colleague list and my and my potential client list by 80 some people in New York. And the week before that, I was in Monaco and I hosted a reception at the Buddha bar and it was the most beautiful, beautiful afternoon. And we all just hung out and people came in from all parts of Italy and all over France. And we had people there from Austria. You know, my friendship base, my circle of influence truly looks like the United Nations. And I just absolutely love it. You know, it's the reason I do what I do. It's the reason I have a laptop lifestyle and it's the reason that I travel around the world and speak at conferences and coach companies and, and help people thrive. You know, that's my objective. That's why I'm on the planet and I love it. I don't work. I thrive. I get up every day. I love being of service and I love sharing and I love helping you. So. Thank you for subscribing. Give me a big thumbs up and absolutely share this if you find value and definitely comment because I would love to know how I can help you thrive. I would be just warm my heart. All right, enough. I got to go get on with the day. Mwah. Ciao. And I will see you tomorrow.